I was a market maker of, of Japanese warrants. And essentially, most of the time, my job was making prices in warrants. So learning to be a market maker, that's that's one skill in itself. Um, but but during that process, you know, we hold positions as market makers. So how how did I decide what to trade and why? What did I hold? We had very tough, very strict position limits. So it wasn't like I could just hold whatever I wanted. Um, so so what was it and how do we trade? How do we hold positions? Why did we do that? And that's where it, it sort of started. So this is obviously pre really much of computerized trading. Trading was on the phones, uh, orders written on tickets. And we had minimal screens in front of us, literally just almost like a Reuters screen. Uh, Bloomberg's weren't really around in 1990, uh, things like that. So, you know, very minimal um, uh, technology in front of us. Um, we could print charts if we wanted to of Japanese stocks on uh, on these quick 10 machines. Um, but generally that wasn't that they took some time to do it, you know, so it wasn't something that we were printing off all the time. So how do we pick trades? How did I learn how to how to position trade around my book? And and the reason was actually qu quite more simplistic to, to I think how a lot of traders go on today. Uh, and it is simply that the way that the book was structured the market um there are about 400 450 warrants and we all we all traded about 110 made markets now for some reason the market was was split in terms of alphabet somebody did a to h and blah 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 i started off trading s s to z and what that meant was that for example somebody trading the a's might have a bunch of steel companies and i might have some steel companies and so forth. And there might be some uh, chemical companies on one and chemical companies on the other, some housing companies. And, and so, and, and essentially, you know, the way we, we would trade was, was very simply, like if you saw that steel companies, uh, warrants and stocks were rising, you know, you would go out and be buying steel company stock uh, warrants on, on my book. If that was happening in today, if I saw some strength. Now that is very simple. Now, the next thing is what price. And I think this is where, you know, I think modern day traders, I, I think, have a, a problem that what we didn't have. So if I see that someone else is being lifted, that means people are buying the steel uh, warrants off of them. I, I'm going to immediately try and buy them on, on my book. Now, what price? And well, the reality is here now. And I think this is where, as I said, I think traders today get in, in a bind because they'll say things like, OK, I like this. And I'll buy it if it on a retracement. If it, if it pulls back to here, I'll buy it. Or conversely, they might say, if it breaks through this level, I'll buy it then. And to me, that really confuses the trade. Mm -hmm. Because if the information in front of me right now, back then, and even today, if the information says, this is going up, buy it, people are buying this stock or buying this sector or whatever that is, I'll buy it now on this price because that's what's happening if i think about it if i'm waiting for it to pull back to a level because i'm you know i'm using that on my chart and i and i think that that's i should wait until it pulls back then well if i think this is going up why would it pull back so and if it pulls back i'm probably wrong and conversely why should i wait for it to go up and break through a level because then i've possibly missed a move so our, our our trading was quite simplistic. If you see something's going up, you go and buy it. Now, as market makers, of course, we can set the bid price a bit higher and try and buy that way. Of course, that makes it a little bit easier. Um, but otherwise, I would and my prices would reflect that. But the decision making was quite straightforward, really. If you saw things, so for example, big story today as we record this on what the twenty fourth or whatever of July the yen is strengthening considerably okay so you know back then the yen was also a big story so if you saw the yen strengthening during the day as you're trading you know obviously export companies are going to get hurt you know that export companies are their stocks are going to fall therefore the warrants will fall so you would just you know use that information to, to try and short um and that could be you know a sony or, or or whatever that kind of thing and we would expect japanese export stocks to, to weaken. So we would use what people call fundamental information. Yep. If that's happening, that does drive the market. So there's no doubt about it that a strengthening yen will uh, will hurt Japanese export stocks and a weakening yen, as it has done over the last couple of months, has helped the Nikkei 
rally even today and we're 20 30 years later than, than when i was trading so we do use fundamental information we build the picture and then we just trade now and i think that makes it a lot more a lot easier to make that decision of when do i pull the trigger which is what mm. a lot of people are trying to try to really finesse that Oh, if I just wait for it to pull here, I'll get a better level. Well, it might not get there if, if you're right and this thing's happening. You know, if I sit there and wait for this stock, let's say, you know, yen is strengthening. I think that Japanese exporters are going to are gonna uh, weaken and, and, and go down. I can't wait for them to rally to do that because they're not going to do it. So and similarly, if I wait for them to break through a level before I short, I could have missed the trade. You know, so basically, when do you trade now? What price is this one? because it's, this is the one where it hasn't quite factored it in yet. So that's really how I learned to position trade. Use that flow of information, and it is fundamental information. And actually, it's not about price. It's, it, it doesn't matter what the price is. Right now, I can trade at any price. And, and that's, it will get you know to the Norder method as well. One of the key things is, can you trade at any price? If I have to wait for certain prices to be hit, I'm going to be sitting around a lot more. I'm going to miss actually a lot more trades. Uh, and I'm actually, I think, making rules for myself that I don't need. So quite a simplistic mm -hmm. style of position trading. And we'll, you know, we'll do a little trade review at the end of this, which is, a, you know, something that happened today, um, which is very much along those lines. So that hasn't changed for me. So that's the sort of position trading aspect of it. How do I position trade? Build the picture of what's happening. And then when something is moving that, I think is going to affect the contract I'm trading, jump in now. And no second guessing, no try and finessing, just do it now. Um, so I actually think that makes things a lot more straightforward.